Right. So who gets renal? Um, I'm sorry. Who gets uh, dialysis? Who gets dialyzed? Well, we just went over our patients in chronic renal failure. Those patients who have reached that end stage, those four stages of renal failure, that last phase of renal failure, that end stage, where we really only have 15% of our functioning portion of our kidneys still working. Pretty much meaning we've killed off all the other portions of our kidney due to being overworked, under oxygenated, or um, direct insults. Well, that would be acute renal failure. But for chronic renal failure, too much pressure being pushed on the kidney itself, too much blood sugar, um, too much syrupy workload blood, or just too little oxygen over the, a long, long time. So for hemodialysis, hemo meaning blood, we've got a fat shunt in the arm. That's what's called your AV fistula. You can also do something called a Quinton catheter, which we're putting right here, right here, subclavian, or we can even put it in your neck, um, which is called a Quinton catheter. Do not flush those Quinton catheters. Only the nurse, uh, the hemodialysis nurse, touches those Quinton catheters, okay? So with your patient on hemodialysis, you have to have to expect that your patient is not having any urinary output. Even if they do have urinary output, it's going to be very minimal, okay? Very tiny. So they're going to be on fluid restriction. Any fluid that they're taking in has to be accounted for. Eyes and O's are huge here. Um, we're going to be putting your patient on antihypertensive drugs because all that volume inside the body is going to cause your heart to be working harder to be pushing around that extra volume between dialysis days. So hypertension is going to be an issue now. Um, they might be on a diuretic. Even though your patient's kidneys aren't working, we're still trying to get a little fluid out. You know, I had a patient with um, between a 3 and a 6 glomerular filtration rate, which just basically means that there's about 5% of that kidney working. Now, that 5% we're still trying to use to get urine out. At least a little bit is better than nothing, right? So with our urine, we're teaching your patient with their blood pressure medications now. Um, anything going in the mouth is not going to be filtered out. So you have to understand that if your patient eats a lot of potassium foods, their potassium levels are going to rise between dialysis days. If they eat a lot of sodium, their sodium levels are going to rise. Their body is pretty much locked in a little capsule that can't get any fluid out. Nothing comes out. It's almost like a Hotel California. You can stay as long as you'd like, but you can never leave, right? <laughs> well, that's really what hemodialysis patients do. Nothing can get out of that um, of the blood unless we do our hemodialysis so if your patient you have to teach your patient not to take iron supplements not to take potassium just be very very careful with their medications okay so uh, let's see here before we go on to the next one let's see stimulate blood okay so um, another thing is, remember the kidneys, they filter, but they also regulate um, certain uh, hormones that actually stimulate blood cell production. So your patient with 
hemodialysis is chronically going to have a low H and H, a low um, red blood cell production. Uh, so that H and H, that hemoglobin hematocrit, is probably going to be hovering around eight or nine. Okay. So our normal H and H should be above a twelve to maybe a fourteen, maybe fifteen if we're good. Anytime your H and H, that blood volume drops below that critical number of um, nine, starts getting closer to eight. We're going to be like, oh, snap. You better call the doctor. The doctor's probably going to call you and say, this guy's been at eight hemoglobin for the past week. I don't care. He has, um, you know, um, <laughs> he has hemodialysis tomorrow. We're going to give him two units of blood. Stop calling me. You must be a new nurse, right? So look at your patient. Assess your patient first. If your patient's been trending a low H and H, a low hemoglobin, this is to be expected. We're going to give epigen um, during dialysis, after dialysis. You're going to be giving your patient two units of blood usually with dialysis, with this hemodialysis. Um, something to remember also is that. You have your patient in chronic renal failure on hemodialysis, right? So, when you give, when we're doing hemodialysis, you're also going to be holding any uh, medications. So, with hemodialysis, you hold the meds. Because once we hook your patient up to that big refrigerator of a hemodialysis machine, that refrigerator is going to suck all the blood out of your patient, filter it, and at the same time be pushed that blood back in to your patient. So, if you give your patient blood pressure medications right before they go into hemodialysis, let's say an hour before, all that medication is going to be sucked out of the body, filtered through that big uh, refrigerator of a hemodialysis machine, and your, body, your patient's not going to be able to absorb any of that or benefit. So do not give your patient any medications before they go to dialysis. Uh, let's see here. With your hemodialysis patients, just remember, your electrolyte panels, your lab values are all going to be off. So your potassium is expected to be high, okay? So you're going to have an increased potassium level. You're going to have an increased BUN, a huge creat. So your creat level might even be like an 8, when it should be like at a 1.2. But guys, these guys are in a locked capsule. There's, they can't get anything out, okay? And as I said before, your H and H is going to be down in the dumps chronically. So we're going to give your patient red blood cells, a blood transfusion with dialysis, as well as some epigen to hopefully stimulate. Epigen is just that erythropoietin hormone. That the, that the kidneys are supposed to create. So usually we'll give your patient that with hemodialysis. So let's go into peritoneal dialysis and how it's different.